Hello travelers, welcome to my channel. My wife and I dreamed for a while about flying with Qatar Airways Q Suite business class. We read a lot of feedback and watched a lot of YouTube videos about the great experience that people had. As part of our epic trip to the Maldives, we decided to fly with Qatar Airways and experience Q Suite ourselves. This is the Airbus A350-1000 aircraft flying about 16 hours from LAX to Doha Hamad International Airport, the main hub of Qatar Airways. There are tons of YouTube videos about Qatar Airways Q Suite, but I hope you will find this video helpful and entertaining. By the way, this channel is about luxury island destinations, so if that is the content you're looking for, hit the subscribe button and do not forget to like this video. Let's dive into the topic, shall we? After a smooth check-in process at LAX, we proceeded to the designated gate. We arrived early at the airport hoping to have a lounge access, but unfortunately there was none. We tried the American Express Centurion Lounge, but unfortunately it was still closed. However, the grab-and-go was open, so we took some food and afterwards headed to the waiting area. We always try to board the aircraft as early as possible so that we can take a good picture of the cabin before the cabin is full of passengers. But the queue was already long when we arrived and we were the last business class passengers to board the aircraft. When I entered the cabin for the first time, I was really excited. The first thing I noticed was the burgundy color and the 52 inch high seat walls and the sliding door. The aisle is tighter, but it is understandable because part of the aisle space is taken up by the privacy walls. Let me show you the seat configuration on this aircraft. This is very important to remember when choosing a seat. In the A350-1000 cabin, there are 12 rows with a total of 46 Q-suite seats. Seats A, E, F and K are single and rear facing. I read in some chat groups that some travelers did not like the rear-facing seats because it made them dizzy. But it was not a problem with us at all. Just keep this in mind. Seats E and F are great for couples as the seats can be converted to a double bed. The seat divider may be lowered to achieve this experience. The seat divider is spring-loaded, so you need to use some effort to push it down. The middle seats D, E, F and G are great for family of 3 or 4 or groups. You can slide the TV in seats E and F so you can converse freely with your family or group in seats B and J. Let me now show you the beautiful seat in Q Suite. The seat is plush, comfortable, well padded and is simply beautiful with neutral tone color. This is one of the most comfortable seats I sat on in business class. It also features a large headrest which can move slightly upward. The seat is measured at 20.5 inches wide and in bed mode, it is about 80 inches long. The only thing I do not like about this seat is the footwell. It is slanted and pretty narrow, especially at the bottom. When I was sleeping, my foot kept hitting the wall and it has little room to maneuver. I'll be honest, I was not able to sleep well. Other than the narrow footwell, the seat is excellent and it looks brand new, no scuffs and super clean. And oh, before I forget, to the right of me, I got this large reading light that you can reposition in different angles and set to various level of brightness. There is also a hanger holder next to it if you have clothes to hang. The seat controls are located just below the small storage space across from me on my right. The control is a bit far away, but pay attention to that button. When pressed, you will feel a massaging motion in your seat. It is so cool feature to help you relax during your travel. That probably is the coolest seat feature. For comfort, you have this silky and comfortable pillow. The firmness of the pillow is just right for me, and it really look and feel high-end. There is also a decorative pillow you can use that's on the counter with travel messages printed on it. 
This pillow is flimsy and not designed for sleeping. Passengers also get this very silky, very thick and heavy blanket. This blanket is so big, it did not have any problem covering my body. But as the cabin temperature was just right, it was too warm when I was covered with the blanket. I only use it to cover my body from waist down only. And to top it off, passengers were given a pair of pajamas made by the white company in London. In most airlines, pajamas are reserved for first class passengers, but not in Qatar Q Suite. You will have your own pajamas. But this amenity is only in Q Suite because our flight from Doha to the Maldives was also business class, but there were no pajamas given. The pajamas is made of very comfortable cotton fiber with a gray top and a blue bottom. The quality of the pajamas is not cheap at all. It is now my go-to pajamas at home. There's also a set of slippers inside the bag. This is a typical slippers used in other airlines. It's just colored blue. With regards to privacy, or you want to take a nap or sleep, you can close the privacy door. You can only lock the door when the plane is already airborne. This is what separates Q Suite from the other business class seats in other airlines. At night, the cabin lights are dimmed and the color of the light shifts to a blue shade suitable for sleeping. Let me show you the available storage space for passengers. There is a storage space next to the seat. This storage compartment has a padded lid that pops open when you press a button. You can also extend the height of the storage space by pressing another button. When I opened the lid, I saw the Orynx brand headphones and a water bottle inside. I found the compartment as a good place to put my small belongings. There is also a marble countertop where the blanket, decorative pillow, and amenity kit are kept when I boarded. Below is a small storage space, great for your small electronics like phones and even mini iPad. When it comes to juicing your electronic devices, you have multiple options. Let's start with the USB and HDMI ports right below the big screen. Right below the seat control, you will find an electrical plug and another USB port for charging. The flight entertainment for passengers to enjoy is impressive. Firstly, you get this massive 21.5-inch touchscreen. The screen is pretty bright and picture quality is great. I am not sure if the screen size is the same as the United Polaris Business Class or this one is a little bigger, but the picture quality in Q-Suite is way better. Here's what makes the entertainment system remarkable. You can control the screen in three ways. Firstly, you can use the touch screen, which is a bit cumbersome because you have to reach out to control the screen. Secondly, you can also use the handheld remote, which is located below the seat control. And the third one that is unique is that you can control the screen using your phone, which is connected to Wi-Fi. Just scan a QR code that takes you to a web page then enter a code that identifies the TV, and voila, you can control the screen. Going back to the remote control, if you are tired of watching from the big screen, you can also watch through the remote. Imagine that. But no matter how you control the screen, there is no lag or delay. This was actually the first thing I tested about how responsive the screen is, and there was no lag whatsoever. When it comes to entertainment selections, you have a large selection of movies, TV shows, and other flight-related content. There were more than 70 movies, some recent and a lot older movies to choose from. Over 60 television shows with complete seasons. We can't talk about in-flight entertainment without mentioning the headphones. As I mentioned earlier, the headphone is stored in the storage compartment next to the seat. This is an Oryx brand noise-canceling over-the-ear headphone. The headphone does not look and feel high-end. It is made of plastic material, but it does a pretty good job of blocking outside noise. The sound quality is not great but decent. The high and low sound is clear but not as crisp as my Bose headset. There is also Wi-Fi on board. Qatar offers self-proclaimed super Wi-Fi. 
But there is nothing super about the Wi-Fi. I got disconnected a lot and it was kind of slow, especially when you're already flying over the Pacific Ocean. The only consolation is that the Wi-Fi access cost only 10 bucks for the entire flight. The 16-hour flight is just $10. That is insanely cheap. You get occasional disconnections, but it is hard to complain with that price. As with other business class experience, passengers are provided with an amenity kit. To be honest, I was hoping that the amenity kit is inside a leather pouch, but I was dead wrong. When I first saw a white cardboard box on the counter, I thought it was a chocolate box for the passengers. But it was, in fact, the amenity kit. I was a little disappointed, to be honest. Anyway, let's take a look what's inside the box. The kit is supplied by Doptique, a perfume company in Paris. So you got a face cream, lip balm, lotion, you got this perfume spray, eye mask, not impressed with this mask by the way, earplugs, and socks. Your toothpaste, toothbrush, and disposable razor are inside the lavatory. And finally, and definitely not the least, allow me to show you the dining experience in Q Suite. Unique to Qatar Airways is dining on demand. You can eat whatever time you choose, but it should not be less than an hour before landing. The flight attendant will take your chosen meal when it is safe to do so immediately after departure. The attendant will also ask the time you want to eat. When it comes to wine selection, there are a lot to choose. But since my wife and I don't drink alcohol, we choose the mocktails, which were really good. The pineapple punch was my favorite, but they have four other mocktails to choose from the menu. For my dinner, I opted for the pan-seared cut with angel hair pasta. Here's what I got. I got an artisan bread with butter, Italian dressing, Tabasco sauce. I also got the tomato sauce. And of course, the main dish, pan-seared cod with sun-dried tomato and pesto cream. The presentation of the main dish looks really delicious and appetizing. The pesto sauce tastes so delicious. The noodles were perfectly cooked, but the fish was a little overcooked. For my dessert, I selected a chocolate fondant. The chocolate was so moist and flavorful. The bitterness of the chocolate and the creaminess and sweetness of the caramel was perfectly balanced. Can you see the caramel seeping from the center of the cake? Ooh, it was so yummy. I am not a chocolate guy, but I almost finished the dessert. It's that good. For breakfast, there were four dishes to choose from, and I chose the cheddar cheese omelet. Here's what I got. A breakfast croissant, butter, and strawberry jam. I also got coffee and of course the main dish. In the main dish, it has the omelet of course, baked potato wedges, roasted cherry tomato, and sautéed spinach. The omelette, potatoes, and roasted tomato was perfectly cooked, but the spinach was overcooked. In between both meals, you have sandwiches, salad, mini burgers to choose, but I didn't eat in between meals because I wanted to sleep. Overall, it was a good dining experience. But I would say the Air France business class food is still the gold standard when it comes to airplane food, but Qatar Airways is not far behind. This begs the question, is Qatar Airways Q Suite the best business class experience? I would say despite some inconveniences like narrow footwell and subpar amenities like the cardboard box amenity kit, overall, Q Suite is by far the best business class experience. You can't get wrong flying with Qatar Airways Q Suite.
In my next video, I will be featuring our business class experience from Doha to Maldives again with Qatar Airways but not the Q-Suite cabin. I got some surprises on that flight so stay tuned. But before then, watch my video about 10 facts you need to know about the Maldives before booking a trip. Until next time travelers, bye for now.